Greetings, friends. How are you doing? I just wanted to make a video um, about psychiatry, another video. Um, yesterday, after some online conversations, I realized that I could make a video to share some information that I've already written about, and maybe that will help people to read about it. So you can either read about it, um, or if you would rather just listen, then I'll, I'll go ahead and, and share what I've written. So this is basically the truth about psychiatry as I see it. And I called my article uh, a hard pill to swallow. What is the hardest pill to swallow? Is it Celexa, Paxil, Prozac, or Zoloft? Maybe it's Abilify, Geodone, Risperdal, or Zyprexa. Or is it Effexor, Ativan, Clonopin, or Xanax? What about Lamictal, Lithium, Ritalin, or Adderall? As hard as any one of these pills is to swallow, and only a person who has swallowed many of them can tell you how hard it is, by far the hardest pill to swallow may often be the proverbial red pill that Morpheus of the Matrix offered to Neo, that is, the truth. In the spirit of the Matrix, I would like to offer you the hard-to-swallow, honest-to-goodness, red pill truth about psychiatry. If you can't handle the truth, I don't blame you. Not many can. But as one who has been down the rabbit hole and back, I would also like to offer you a choice. You take the blue pill, and you continue to believe whatever you want to believe about psychiatry. You take the red pill, and I show you how deep the psychiatric rabbit hole goes. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth about psychiatry, nothing more. And then I have listed blue pill with a link and red pill. So here's the blue pill link. Click on that. You have chosen the blue pill. You have chosen to believe whatever you want to believe. You have chosen to remain inside the matrix of psychiatry and the mental health system. Godspeed. So that's it with the, the blue pill. So if you rather just, just keep it at that, then you can stop listening right now. For those who choose the red pill, you have chosen the red pill. You have chosen to explore just how deep the rabbit hole of psychiatry and the mental health system is. Follow me. So, red pill continued. Congratulations, thank you. Welcome to the truth about psychiatry. Unless you've been down this rabbit hole before, everything that you have previously been told or hitherto believed about psychiatry and the mental health system is false. Let me begin with the truth about who you are and the truth about the purpose of life. You are a beloved son or daughter of God. You were created in the image of God. You have a divine nature and destiny. That is your true identity. As a beloved son or daughter of God, you have great potential, glorious beyond expression. As a child of God, you have been endowed with marvelous capacities. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that soak in. You are here for a purpose. The purpose of life is to have joy. God loves you. He will help you, strengthen you, and guide you, if you so choose, toward your glorious eternal destiny. Let that soak in, too. You live in a complex, fallen world. In this complex, fallen world, you are subject to trials, temptations, afflictions, distress, and suffering. Although the purpose of life is to have joy, the masked man in Princess Bride was not wrong when he declared, Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. Now, let's proceed to the truth about psychiatry. In this complex, fallen world, the adversary of your soul seeks to confuse you about your true identity and purpose. He seeks to make everyone just as miserable as he is. Whereas God has given you a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind, one of the devil's tactics is to threaten you with a spirit of fear. He tempts and tries you. He tempts to intimidate you and to instill hatred and anger in your heart. He even tries to convince you that your beautiful, powerful, loving, and sound mind, your spirit, is somehow ugly, weak, hateful, inherently sick, or otherwise defective. Don't believe it. You are a child of God. Like the devil, the system of psychiatry is set up to convince you that you are sick or mentally ill. Think about it. Psychiatry, along with psychopharmacy, is parasitic. It feeds off of those who have been labeled with any kind of, quote-unquote, mental illness. MDD, ADHD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, ODD, 
and so forth and so on ad infinitum. As an imperfect mortal being, you may certainly experience a number of diversities, unwanted feelings, afflictions, and infirmities. Some of these may be very painful and severe, but these temporary mortal conditions do not in any way define you. Even if you feel anxious, depressed, moody, disturbed, or defiant, and even if you behave differently from those around you, you are still a child of God. None of those problems in living or apparently aberrant behaviors define who you really are. Similarly, your sins, your sexual proclivities, and your weaknesses do not define who you are. No one is perfect. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For any number of reasons, you may feel spiritually, mentally, or emotionally sick. Don't despair. God already knew that such would be the case. Out of his infinite love for you, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, the great physician, the master healer, to help you. Unlike the ever-expanding modern militia of doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, and mental health experts, Jesus Christ knows exactly how to heal you. Look at the word psychiatry. What does it mean? The word psychiatry is derived from two Greek words, psyche, meaning soul, and iatrikos, meaning medical treatment. Ostensibly, therefore, psychiatry means the medical treatment of the soul. What could be more absurd? In the first place, for psychiatry to be legitimate, a psychiatrist would have to know something about the human soul. Secondly, for psychiatry to be legitimate, it would have to be possible for a psychiatrist to treat the human soul medically. Good luck with that. Too many people have been duped by psychiatry into thinking that their temporary mortal afflictions are caused by some mysterious mental illness. Nothing could be further from the truth. Of all the fictitious diseases that are cataloged in the DSM-5, the pernicious Bible of psychiatry, are complete. All of the fictitious diseases that are cataloged in the DSM-5, the pernicious Bible of psychiatry, are complete fabrications. A psychiatric label is not a diagnosis. A psychiatric label is a way to convince you, just like the devil tries to convince you, that your mighty spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind is somehow permanently deficient. A psychiatric label is a way to convince you that your beautiful, powerful, loving, and sound mind, your, sp your spirit, is somehow ugly, weak, hateful, inherently sick, or otherwise defective. You may experience temporary afflictions, temptations, or infirmities, but these temporary trials do not define you, no matter how sophisticated or scientific the psychiatric stigma stigmatization may sound. Think of the prophet Moses. How did the adversary attack him? When Satan came to tempt him, he addressed Moses as a son of man. Moses had just learned the truth. God had just told him face to face that he was a son of God, created in the image of the only begotten son of God, Jesus Christ. But Satan tried to convince Moses that he was nothing more than a son of man. Similar, similarly, in our modern therapeutic state, where everyday life has been completely medicalized and sexualized, Satan, with the help of psychiatry, tries to convince children of God that they are nothing more than defective sons of men. To translate Moses' experience in today's, today's, into today's debilitating and devilish terminology, Satan's approach might sound something like this. Moses, bipolar boy, or depressed, anxious, ADHD, schizophrenic, addicted, gay, lesbian, queer, or bisexual person, worship me. To all such psychiatric and sexualized seductions, you can take a lesson from meek Moses and say, Get thee hence, Satan, deceive me not. Even if the children of God fall prey to the lie that their true identity is defined by a psychiatric or a sexualized label, all hope is not lost, because God, our Heavenly Father, already knew that that, that would happen. Heavenly Father loves us. He sent his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to rescue, help, save, heal, and mend. Jesus Christ is the great physician, the master healer, the good shepherd. He brings the balm of Gilead. He knows exactly how to heal every mortal affliction, no matter how severe. Way back in the October 1995 General Conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Elder Durrell A. Woolsey of the Quorum of the Seventy warned against, quote, an increasing dependence upon a growing army of psychiatric specialists instead of priesthood, God, and self. Unquote. Prophetic indeed. Similarly, President Dallin H. Oaks has taught, 
quote, here is the answer to one of life's great, great, great questions. Who am I? I am a child of God with a spirit lineage to heavenly parents. That parentage defines our eternal potential. That powerful idea is a potent antidepressant. It can strengthen each, each of us to make righteous choices and to seek the best that is within us. Establishing the mind of a young person, the powerful idea that he or she is a child of God, and you have given self-respect and motivation to move against the problems of life. Unquote. Sadly, the opposite is also true. Establish the idea in the mind of a young person, or of any child of God for that matter, that he or she is defective or defined by his or her sexual proclivities, temporary mortal pains, or mental illness, and you will deprive him or her of the self-respect and motivation necessary to do anything but take antidepressants and turn to the therapeutic state and the mental health system for answers. As Elder Woolsey taught so long ago, the real answers are found in priesthood, God, and self, not in the growing army of psychiatric specialists. The more that you know and understand who you really are as a child of God, the less credence you will give to the counterfeits. The more that you understand the true purpose of life, to have joy, the more clearly you will see that psychiatry is a pseudo-scientific system of slavery that masquerades as a medical profession. But what about psychiatrists and mental health workers? Aren't they children of God too? Yes. In some ways, they are just as confused as the people they are trying to help. I would venture to argue that the majority of mental health workers and even many psychiatrists themselves enter the field with the desire to help others. This is a good and noble desire which is all the more reason to be incensed by the way in which psychiatry itself manipulates the good and noble desires of both patients and the doctors. It is a good and noble desire to be healed, and it is a good and noble desire to heal. However, the gift to heal and the gift to be healed are gifts of the Spirit of God, distributed by Him for His purposes and according to His will and timing. Sadly, psychiatry represents one of the many counterfeits of healing that are so prevalent in our world. Psychiatry wounds and calls it healing. It imprisons and it calls it hospitalization. It tortures and it calls it treatment. It drugs and it calls it medicine. It labels and it calls it diagnosis. It shocks and it calls it therapy. It cripples and it calls it a cure. Consider this question. What are the fruits of the Spirit of God? We learn from the Apostle Paul that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. These are all the fruits that flow from Christ and from the kind of being that you really are as a child of God. Now consider this question. What is the opposite of the fruit of the Spirit? Paul names a few. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and so forth. To these opposites, I would add anxiety, depression, despair, and so forth. In other words, those are things that don't come from God. Did you know that the Greek word pharmakia, from which we derive words like pharmacy, pharmacist, and pharmaceutical, means sorcery and witchcraft? It appears at least eight times in the Bible, including the aforementioned teachings of the Apostle Paul. Let me be clear. If you experience any of the fruits of the Spirit of God, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, you can be sure that those fruits come from God. On the other hand, if you experience any of the opposite, you can be sure that they do not come from God. Let me be even more clear. If you happen to experience opposition, whether it be in the form of anxiety, depression, or any other kind of spiritual, mental, or emotional trouble, that does not mean that you are any of those feelings, nor does it mean that you are the cause of any of those feelings. Part of our mortal experience on this earth includes temptation, trial, and troubles of every kind. But Jesus Christ and his spirit are stronger than all that. Turn to him. He knows exactly how you feel and what it's like to suffer in every particular way in which you suffer, and he knows exactly how to heal you. Does this mean that we dismiss doctors and modern medicine altogether? Of course not. But it does mean that we dismiss the devil and reject the fruits of flesh that are couched in the pseudoscientific psychiatric stigmas of so-called mental illness that masquerade 
as medical diagnoses. It does mean that we remember who we really are as children of God and that we learn how his laws of healing operate and become efficacious in our lives. One doctor that I admire, the late Dr. Thomas Saws, put it this way, quote, In the age of faith, men and women had to and wanted to call their spiritual problems sins and their spiritual authorities fathers, who in turn called them children. In the age of medicine, men and women have to and want to call their spiritual problems sicknesses and their spiritual authorities doctors, who in turn called them patients. Unquote. Allow me to further clarify a point here. If you experience any one of the number of the symptoms of what is popularly called mental illness, that does not necessarily mean that it is a result of sin or some character defect. In fact, the opposite might even be true. Moses was the meekest of men, a powerful prophet, and the Lord's chosen servant to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the Promised Land. But he was not spared from his own kind of suffering. Similarly, even our Savior Jesus Christ, the greatest of all, God's perfect, pure, and precious Son experienced pains, afflictions, temptations, and trials that are too terrible to tell. He knows what it is like because he has been there. He knows how to triumph because he has triumphed, and he will continue to triumph. Because of him, we too can triumph over every obstacle that the world, psychiatry, or the devil put in our way. Jesus Christ has overcome the world, and because of him, so may we. The psychiatric rabbit hole goes much deeper than this. It is a terrible abyss. If this is a hard pill to swallow, I understand. Turn to the great physician, the master healer, and the good shepherd, Jesus Christ himself. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Only he can provide the hard-to-swallow, honest-to-goodness, red pill truth about all things. Only he can lead you out of the matrix of sin and sorrow and suffering into the sunlit skies of celestial bliss. In his presence and in his light, all limiting labels dissolve before the eternal, soul-saving truth that you are a child of God. Finally, if you happen to be hooked on any brain-damaging psychotropic drugs that are euphemistically called medications, don't despair. If you would like to withdraw from them, it is important to understand that withdrawal must be done very slowly, very gradually, and with as much spiritual and emotional and temporal support as possible. The process can be excruciatingly painful, but if you want to claim back your brain, your mind, your life, and your joy, it is a process that I endorse under the proper conditions. Thank you for choosing the red pill. It is the honest-to-goodness truth about psychiatry as I see it. If it is a hard pill to swallow, or if you have any questions or concerns, that is normal. I can still admire you for doing what many victims of psychiatry wish they had done from the beginning, questioning or refusing to swallow the pill. Thank you for listening.